Hi everybody, welcome back to Let's Play Mass Effect 3, where we've come up with, I think it's a pretty foolproof plan. We flew through the Omega-4 relay and survived. We can do this. That's a spirit, Shepard. I was starting to wonder where it went. How would we summon her? The tower was built in an arena devoted to Kalros' glory. The Salarians thought she would scare away intruders. Appears to have worked. There are two maw hammers there. <laughs> the largest in existence. If you can activate them, Kalros will come. That should distract the Reaper. Meanwhile, laboratory nearby. We'll finish synthesizing cure. Well, the Krogan Laboratory. I bet it's, it's not going to be very good. You do know that, don't you, Morden? Still, let's get it done. We know why we're here and what's at stake. So let's make it happen. Wait! I know you're doing this for your own reasons, Shepard. But try to make sure you don't get your ass killed. I wouldn't know what to say at your funeral. Go! I've got this! I am Urgot Rex! And this is my planet! See you on the other side. Stay alive, Shepard. We'll have cure ready. Let's get in there! No, no. Duck behind anything. I was trying to. I was genuinely trying to cover behind anything. these grenades so ridiculously powerful now I used to be able to just stand on top of them oh, perhaps there's some sort of uh, range some sort of randomization to them. Sounds cool. Not going to use it though. Shepard, some luck. Original strain in storage. Preparing the cure now. Make it quick, Morton. They're all over us out here. Off to the left. Where? Well, I don't see them. And I can't take cover. I meant to run then. Now this I've never done before. If I was organic, that would probably burn. Just keep moving. Take the cover. I'm not sure cover's going to work. Hard to believe we're really doing this. Don't stop. I knew they wouldn't give up. Their timing is impeccable. Go! Let's push ahead! Up on our left! One of the hammers! The other one is on the right! Reaching them is another man! That was dull. How was that helpful instruction, team? Oh, Oh, 
I realised that. Oh, I don't know where I'm going. There's one. No, no. Morton, we hit the first hammer. Hug coming. Almost half cure. Eve's final signs dropping. Trying to compensate. Second hammer's on the other side. Shepard, get that second hammer going. There's a reaper in my way, Rex. Dispersal in two minutes, but Eve dead. What happened? Stress sampling, too intense, too much trauma. Wanted to stop, she refused. Her decision. She did it for her people. Female was stabilizing force for Krogan. Would have helped Rex rally more fans in support. Damn! Guess that might happen. Control room at top of Shroud Tower. Must take elevator up. You're going up there? Yes. Readings at lab suggest temperature malfunction. Could affect cure viability. Need to adjust settings manually. We don't want to delay him. I don't want to do the sabotage. It's not a malfunction. It's sabotage. Your people did it years ago. Of course. Shroud necessary for distribution. STG would have backup plan. Contingency to stop cure. And you knew. I knew, but look, let's just let's just get the job done. I'm not sure I can trust the Krogan, but I trust you. Thank you, Shepard. Difficult decision. Why it had to be me? Someone else might have gotten it wrong. Cured. Krogan free. New beginning. For all of us.
into the void, we commit her body. In life, this Krogan faced our greatest enemy with rare valor. In death, she has proven a savior to her people. May her courage fan the flames of hope for the future. She is now the true mother of T'Chunga. She's probably the wisest Krogan there ever was. This is a loss for the Krogan. She was everything I want the Krogan to be. I hope we follow her example. Uh, yeah. I don't think the Krogan will understand her teachings. I think they're going to miss the point. I think in ten years' time, there'll be another Krogan Rebellions. And I'm not responsible for her death. Why would I say that? The bloody Salarians are. I mean, saying that probably isn't a good plan either right now. But no, I take no responsibility for her death. I'm sorry for her loss. You can never know who'll survive war and who won't. Unless you have a hand in it. Malin's research might have saved her. We'll never know. I won't hold a grudge, Shepard. You've proven you're still a friend to the Krogan. Too bad about Morden, though. Yeah, it is a real shame. He was pretty much the only Salarian I liked in the whole universe. He wouldn't have had it any other way. And I'm sure wherever he is, he's putting in a good word for us. We'll name one of the kids after him. Maybe a girl. <laughs> Tell the Primarch... I'll be deploying troops to Palavin immediately. And when you're ready to kick the Reapers off Earth, you let me know. The Krogan are back in business. thing you just pulled off, Commander. Curing the Genophage? I never thought I'd see the day. Rex has agreed to help the Turians, Admiral. We should get their full support. I take it that leaves the Solarians out of the equation. The cost of their support was too high, sir. Well, I'll defer to your judgment on that, Commander. Let's hope we don't need them. Hackett, out. Commander, heard not Rax has begun sending troops to Palavan. You kept your end of the bargain, and now I'll keep mine. The Turian hierarchy will stand with humanity against the Reapers. I'm glad we can help each other out. It's the only way we're going to defeat the Reapers. That much is certain. To that end, several dry dock ships are ready to help build the Crucible. Garrus will coordinate them. Yes, sir. And when the time comes to deploy it, the full measure of our fleet will be there for Earth. May the spirits watch over us all. I'll start managing Turian support right away, Shepard. You must be exhausted. Morden dying... it can't be easy. I'll sleep when I'm dead. We both know you need a clear head to win a war. There's no room for mistakes here. You should catch some shut-eye. I'll make sure Joker doesn't launch any suicide missions. Anything happens, you let me know. in the atmosphere, but I do think the Krogan are a far better bet than the Salarians, at least in the mid-term. In the long term... In the long term, they'll probably overrun the galaxy and we'll have to have a war with them. 
foot and in the short term the Solarians would be perfectly good against the Reapers but let's say the war lasts beyond I got a few scratches on that I hope they just give me character beyond the lifespan of Shepherd and goes on for 150, Your 200 years program will be a much better asset in that situation being cured than the Salarians would be cured or uncured. Not that they're ill. The Krogan cured will be a great asset if the war drags on. It's open. Shepard, there's something you need to hear. All right. Is this a bad time? I'm hoping that's the business I think it is. It's fine. Tell me what's going on. The Solarian Counselor has an urgent matter. Let me guess. She called the comm room? The Council must be taking the Crucible seriously. I'll see you downstairs. Disappointed again. Commander. Can I help you, Counselor? Shepard, I want you to understand that I owe my position to you, and it's not something that I take lightly. Were it not for you, that weak-minded Counselor Valorn would still be alive, leading the Solarians down the sewage pipe. But now I'm forced to champion a cure for the genophage. It's like saying we need a hurricane to put out a wildfire. Oh no. No, do you actually have some work to do? Oh no. So I'm so sad for you. Prick. It's not a wildfire. It's the death of the galaxy. Drum that into your people's heads. They'll fall you. A short-term solution, but the short-term may be all we have. Has a ring to it. But that is not the only reason I contacted you. The other regards humanity's counselor, Udina. We need to talk about his activities. The less than legal ones. Come see me next time you're on the Citadel. Ishil out. Ah, oh, hey Udina. Commander, Admiral Hackett's available on VidCom. But I also... I hate you as well. Oh, I'm just there's just so much hatred. I don't know who I hate more. I might have to think about this. I mean, I really hate Udina. Really, really hate him. But equally, the other counselors, I hate them. Maybe I hate them more. Maybe I hate them the same. Commander Shepard, something you need to talk about? What? No, you asked for me. What's our state of readiness, Admiral? I won't lie, Shepard. We're bogged down. Things aren't looking good in most sectors. We need to increase the tempo and chalk up some wins, otherwise... This won't end well for the human race. Or any race. What about the extra help we've picked up along the way? The Krogan and Turians have obviously been a big help. Heard not Rex running the show is a bonus for us. Had that female Krogan you rescued survived, she might have rallied more support from the clans, but I'll take what we can get. I'm glad you disabled that bomb on Tachanka. We could have lost a lot of Krogan support. As it is, we picked up some Turian troops. Good to hear. How about the Solarians? Interesting wrinkle. We've been getting back channel commitments from the strike teams within STG. They're promising to back us. Even after I cured the Genophage? Our intel suggests there are cracks developing between the military and the politicians. These STG guys know the score. They're not gonna jeopardize the entire Solarian Union just because some Delatrass didn't get her way. 
Oh, that's my buddy Major Kirahi. I always like that guy. There's another Salarian I like. That makes one now. What about Arya's mercenaries? Arya to Loke, there's someone I never thought we'd be in bed with. The blood pack will be useful and violent. Mostly Vorcha I hear. We'll put the Blue Suns to good use. Intel says Darner Vosk is bringing his men and that they're gunning for a fight. The Eclipse are providing troops and mechs. When we find a Reaper soft spot, they'll help us hit it. Don't want to know how you got Arya's cooperation. But whatever you did, it was worth it. Do you know how the other races are doing against the Reapers? Believe it or not, the Turians and Krogan actually seem to be getting along. Heard not Rex has deployed troops, and they're giving the Reapers a moment of pause. The Salarians are still hanging on to Sir Kesh, but the Reapers are starting to breathe down their necks, too. What about the Asari? They have to be feeling the heat. The Reapers are moving fast with the obvious intent of taking Thessia. Interestingly, the Reapers are leaving Parnak alone. It's the Yogg homeworld. Can't say that I blame them. Yogg have teeth. Well, if we lose this war, it might be them running the next cycle. It's easy to forget the Reapers don't destroy every species. Just the ones who can threaten them. Any word on the Volus and Elcor? The Turians and the Krogan sent forces to the Volus homeworld, Evrun. It might not be enough, but at least they've got Reaper forces bogged down in a nasty ground war. As for Elcor, they're still in the fight. Though our projections show the Reapers encroaching on their territory soon. What happened to the Batarians? Never stood a chance, hit by the Reapers straight out of the gate. And without any allies to call on, I think the Batarians are history. Not that upset. Have we heard anything from the Quarians or Geth? Something might be brewing near the Geth border, but our intel is sketchy. News is getting harder to come by as things get worse. Nothing more, sir. Keep me posted. Hack it out. And I think that's a good place to leave it. Thank you for watching. Come back for the next part of Mass Effect 3. The Avenger is a common, versatile, military-grade assault rifle manufactured by the Elcos Combine. It's accurate when fired in short bursts, and deadly when fired on full auto. The modular design and inexpensive components of the Avenger make it a favourite of military groups and mercenaries alike. The rifle has a reputation for being tough, reliable, easy to use and easy to upgrade. Named after a Turian spirit of creation, the Faestum was engineered to provide the best possible balance between accuracy and firepower in a machine gun. Each shot is tempered by kickback dampeners inside the shoulder stock which lets the face and pack more punch than other weapons its size without sacrificing precision. Its fully automatic fire and relatively light weight has turned the face and into the Turian infantry's primary go-to weapon. Medium range, semi-automatic rifle, the Matic is a hybrid weapon with an assault rifle's low heat reduction and a sniper rifle's punch. Marksman favourites increase power over that of an assault rifle to bring down hardened targets. Its lack of a full auto setting is advertised as a feature rather than a shortcoming, as it curbs a soldier's tendency to spray an accurate fire under stress. The Argus is a high-powered rifle favoured by senior CSEC officers. An excellent close-range weapon, its bursts of fire ensure ammunition conservation during lengthy conflicts. Other law enforcement agencies across the galaxy are adopting the Argus as their standard rifle, as much for its intimidation factor as its suppression power. The Vindicator is a battle rifle that fires in three round bursts, favoured by assassins and elite mercenaries and deadly at any range. Manufactured by the Elanus Risk Control Services for the Blue Suns Mercenary Group, the Vindicator is popular in the Terminus systems. After the carnage of the Battle of the Citadel, Alliance officers commissioned a new rifle for their ground forces. A variation of the popular Avenger design, the Valkyrie is now standard issue for new recruits. Exceptionally well-crafted, accurate and packing ample firepower, the rifle is a hot black market item when it surfaces. The M76 Revenant unleashes a storm of deadly high-velocity slugs. It has low accuracy but a high thermal clip capacity, and packs considerable firepower. This custom-made machine gun features technology not widely available. 
protected against replication by sophisticated fabrication rights management technology, only the richest and most powerful warlords can afford the revenant. The fancifully named Chakram Launcher uses an internal fabricator to manufacture lightweight aluminium discs wrapped in holographic tracers. These discs explode on impact, sending shrapnel tearing through the enemy. The markings stamped on the gun's barrel are a shipping code created by its manufacturer, Amalur Equipment. The code warns that the rifle must be assembled carefully, as it contains mixtures extremely volatile under pressure. This is why the Chakram launcher requires thermal clips. Without a way to dissipate the intense heat created by its fabrication process, the rifle circuitry would quickly destroy itself in a spectacularly lethal meltdown. After the Reapers obliterated the Prothean Empire's warships, the Prothean resistance was forced to develop weapons that did not rely on intact supply lines. Prothean Particle Rifle is a stripped-down, powerful assault rifle, modified to fire without thermal clips or specialised ammunition. Alliance scientists agree that it appears to share some principles with the Collector's Particle Beam weapon. Although the Prothean Particle Rifle requires a temporary cooldown period if it overheats, an amalgam of two different eras of technology, the Particle Rifle is still a deadly, efficient weapon. Named in memory of the quarians killed in the Morning War on the planet ADAS, the ADAS anti-synthetic rifle's weapons electrical attack has been optimised for medium to long-range firefights. Alliance Marines take issue with calling it a rifle, since technically it has no rifling in its barrel. The Quarians shrug this off, as Quarian weapon terminology rarely translates flawlessly into human languages. These Cerberus-modified Matic rifles are fully automatic. Cerberus gunsmiths reigned in the recoil issues, resulting in a gun that stays on target but delivers slightly less punch per round than a standard Matic. As such, the weapon is typically utilised by Cerberus's elite troops, who constantly train to make every burst count. The Typhoon is a distinctive light machine gun featuring a face shield to protect the shooter from headshots. Its power and recoil are so notorious that it includes a high-tech kinetic reducer to fight muzzle climb. Since the reducer tries to limit all motion by the weapon, marksmen do not engage it while moving and instead reduce the recoil only while they are in cover. The Striker is a fully automatic weapon that functions more as a grenade launcher than a rifle, firing high impact slugs that detonate on contact. The weapon increases its rate of fire the longer the trigger is held, which is devastating if the weapon can be kept on target. In an attempt to market the Striker outside of the Krogan DMZ, the gun was designed to be fired by non-Krogan, but its recoil tends to off-balance smaller species. Enthusiasts point out that the target on the receiving end of a striker has far worse things to worry about than its shooter's balance. The Hornet is a long-range submachine gun created by Cerberus. It is standard equipment for Cerberus troops, who are trained to handle the recoil from the gun's three-round bursts. Cerberus designed the Hornet to conserve ammunition and provide cover fire during prolonged conflicts. As kinetic barriers have grown in popularity, so has the popularity of submachine guns. Manufactured by the Elkos Combine, the Shuriken machine pistol fires six round bursts with a high rate of fire. While some militaries pass on the Hurricane because of its lower accuracy, the Alliance feels the gun's rapid firing rate offers excellent suppressive fire. A disciplined marksman can use the fully automatic submachine gun to chew through targets with alarming speed. Alliance officers were so pleased with field results that the Hurricane is now many squadrons standard issue SMG. Produced by Alanus Risk Control Services for the Eclipse Mercenary Band, the Tempest is an expensive but deadly addition to anyone's personal arsenal. This fully automatic submachine gun is punishing up close but becomes less accurate at long range. The Geth Plasma submachine gun works on the same principles as the Spitfire. It shoots superconducting toroids that break apart on impact, retaining an electrical charge that flash converts the shrapnel into plasma. Unlike the Spitfire, however, this smaller Geth weapon has been modified to take thermal clips. Holding down the trigger speeds up its rate of fire, rapidly depleting the gun's heat sink in exchange for nearly continuous fire. The Punisher features a secondary barrel that fires one armor-piercing round per main barrel burst. It was developed by Blood Pack gunsmiths, who found that their Vulture recruits frequently forgot to optimise ammo loads in the heat of combat. This configuration makes the process automatic and highly effective at penetrating armour, 